Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on our final day of virtual learning experiences. My name is John Shoemaker from the Department of Educational Technology, and we are so excited today to bring you uh, Traveling the World with the Norton Museum of Art right here from our own backyard. If you've been joining us the past few days, you know we've been all over the country from New York to Yosemite to Shenandoah. Uh, so we're gonna end right here in our own backyard. So um, before we get started, don't forget to uh, thumbs up the video, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are at a good number now. We're almost at 5.3 thousand followers. So thank you so much for that. Also, uh, we will share at the end the link to all of our virtual learning experiences for this year. And um, one of the cool things we did is we also added to that uh, to that list uh, all of our experiences for the past three years. So uh, please feel free to share this with all of your teacher friends. They can use any of the experiences, uh, even the ones from a few years ago. There's still some great things out there. So um, with all that being said, uh, Thanks for being here. We're going to be visiting the Norton Museum of Art with our friend Meredith Gregory. Uh, unfortunately, we were going to be dual language, but um, our dual language person uh, ended up being sick today. So it will not be in a dual language this time. So you'll have to just watch our next stream for that one. But uh, we still wanted to bring you this experience so that you can see uh, a great place that you can visit this summer and have a lot of fun. And uh, I personally want to thank Meredith. Uh, and Veronica, because they did bring us in a couple months ago, maybe about a year ago now, to visit the museum. That was the first time I was there, so it was really great to see it in person. So um, the museum is closed today, so you're getting an exclusive tour. Uh, so I'm going to bring up Meredith, who will take you around a tour of the Newton. So thank you, Meredith. Take it away. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Hi, everybody. My name is Meredith, and I am a teacher here at the Norton Museum of Art. And I am live from the Norton. Uh, as Mr. Schumacher mentioned, I uh, the museum is closed on Wednesdays during the summer. So you are getting a VIP experience of our museum. I'm standing right inside the museum entrance. So when you come to the museum, you'll walk through these museum doors and you'll see this amazing museum, and then you'll come and you'll actually get your ticket right here. And what's great is during the summer, starting this weekend, the museum is free to you and your entire family every Saturday. So tell your family you wanna to come to the Norton Museum of Art, we're free every Saturday, and we hope to see you soon. Let's head on inside. So I have a cart that I am using uh, to show you the museum today. It's a cart with a web camera on it. So sometimes I'll stand behind the camera while I'm walking through the museum or in front of a work of art. Uh, you may notice we, we have all different types of art in the museum. We even have a race car right now designed by an artist named Alexander Calder. This is the Great Hall. This is the biggest room in our museum. And it's a place where you can relax. You'll see a lot of different tables and chairs. Oop, where am I? Over on this side. You can also do an augmented reality game on an iPad right here at our Norton Art Plus cart. And it's just a great room to kind of hang out and you can wait for other friends um, to be with you. So I just want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to travel around the world. Art can transform us to different times and to different places. Even if you're not traveling this summer, you can come to the Norton and take a trip all over the world. So today, we're going to see three works of art, and we're going to go to Cuba, Italy, and China. So let's head and go see our first work of art. On our way, Look and see if there's anything that catches your eye that you might want to come back and see. Or maybe that you have a question about and your teacher can write um, about it in the chat. So I'm going to stand behind the camera and I'm going to walk to our first work of art. We're going to walk by this cool race car. And as I'm walking, sometimes with this camera, I freeze when I'm walking. So I promise if I freeze, I'll come back in just a moment. 
So here's our race car. So artists um, not use only a paint and drawing, but they can also draw on things like cars as well. We're going to go down this hallway, which I have very exciting, but there's something really special at the end of this hall. So this is where you can use the restrooms at our museum and get a drink of water. And I want you to look for a door. Look for a glass door. And as we head through the glass door, I'm going to open it and we're going to be transported to another world. Here we go. Wow. This is my favorite room in the museum. I can't wait to show you all. Okay. I'm going to go over here because this work of art in this room, the ceiling. So I'm going to move my camera all the way up off of me and onto the ceiling. Wow. I'm noticing so many different colors and shapes. This is over 1,200 pieces of glass. This artist named Dale Chihuly made this in 2003. And he made this just for the museum. It's what's called a site-specific work. A site-specific work. And I wonder why he made this work. It kind of looks like the ocean. Why would he make this for the museum? To me, we were right next to the water. And he made all different shapes that almost look like coral. Point if you see a seashell. I see a seashell right in the middle. Point if you see a starfish. I see a starfish on the right. Point if you see a little baby floating in the water. <laughs> Dilcher Hooley liked to get a little silly. He included these little babies called in um, art. They're called pooties. P-U-T-T-I. Pooties. So he even put these little babies in his work. So there's so many things to look at and explore. And what you can do is you can walk underneath this, but you can also, my favorite thing to do is to lie down on the floor and look at these works of art. And you can explore all 1,200 pieces of glass. Dale Chihuly is also really interested in light. Look how on the wall, the pieces of glass reflect, the color reflects all over the room. So it's kind of just a nice place to look at art, relax, and even lay on the floor. Okay, so let's head to our uh, first work of art. I just had to show you my favorite room. Uh, it's called the, we call it the Chihuly Room. And the work is called Persian Sea Life because the glass that I was showing you um, is a type of sand that you get um, from Persia, from, from that area, from the Middle East. Okay, now we're heading into our contemporary galleries. Contemporary means works of art that were made by people living today. So the artist we're going to see is still alive today. So I'm going to head around the corner. And what I love about this gallery is you'll see all different types of art. Not just painting on the wall, but look. We have a work of art made all entirely out of buttons. We have a work of art that's hanging made from cardboard and steel. It's really heavy. And today we're thinking about places and going around the world. So we're going to look at this work of art. What I love about art is it gives us time to just look. We are so busy in our world today. We're always on our phones or waiting to stream something on TV. I get really mad even if my Netflix takes more than five seconds to load. So we're so busy that what I love about coming to the Norton is it's just our time to relax and look. So today we're going to see with our eyes, we're going to think 
what, about what we're seeing and what this work of art is about. And then we're going to wonder about bigger th- themes and how it connects to our life. So I challenge you to take 30 seconds to look at this work of art and to not look away. Look right at this work of art. See how your eye moves around this work of art. Just as you're seeing, think about what you notice. If you feel like you've seen everything, challenge yourself to find something new. So right now we're, we're quiet and we're just looking. I'm going to try to stand out of the camera so you can focus on the work of art. Okay. I'm going to ask a series of questions. See, think, and wonder questions. Teachers, you can have your students write down their responses to these questions. Or maybe you want to pause this video and have your students Um, answer these questions as a group, it's up to you. So now that we've done our 30 seconds of looking, I'm going to ask the following questions. What is your eye? What is your eye drawn to? What's the first thing you noticed? What other details do you notice? What elements of art and elements of art are line, shape, color, texture? What elements of art do you see? What colors do you see? What lines do you see? What shapes do you see? This this artist really cared about shapes. Oh, we have someone from the EdTech team who's already seeing a mermaid, a boat, a man rowing, lights, reflection in the water, palm trees, a big black ramp um, that looks like a triangle. And it really pulls your eye, right? Look how the artist is using this line. He's using the shape that ends up in a point and it's going right towards this man and drawing our eye um, to this man. But almost it's creating a circle too. Oh, you're noticing shadows. The artist is using different colors to show shadows and the reflection of shapes. What do these shapes and colors tell us about the mood or the feeling of this work of art? What's the mood or feeling of this work of art? And don't forget, teachers, you can pause this at any time. If you'd like to take some time to just write or discuss as a class. And as Mr. Schumacher mentioned, this will be recorded too. You can always come back to these questions. Oh, okay. Um, The EdTech team also said that the white paint really sticks out. This is something that people notice a lot. I wonder why he used bright white paint um, to kind of make these little shapes, these little symbols. I'm noticing these are stars on this triangle. And look, the stars almost match what's in this man's heart. Hmm. So he's trying to tell us a story. He's trying to tell us something through adding these lines, shapes, and colors. Okay, so what's the feeling of this work of art? And lastly, for the C questions, where might this be? Where do you think this is? If you had to guess, this could be anywhere in the world. Where might this be? And I kind of mentioned where we were going. Um, But if you have any guesses of where this might be, also why? Why do you think 
this is the place that you're thinking about. Okay, so we have um, Miss Tasha Burke Pert says, looks like an island. Yeah, I'm noticing something really important, which is one of our elements of art, texture. Look how this artist has created this texture to almost make it seem like it's moonlight um, reflecting on water. And we feel like it's water not only because of the texture, but as the ed tech team mentioned, we have these shadows. Um, and we see this man rowing in a boat. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about this texture. This artist used not only a paintbrush, this is made out of oil paint to create this work of art, but he also put handprints all over this work. So we literally have the artist hand on this work. Do you see those handprints right here? Look at all his hands. And he took this bright green paint and kind of created the feeling of this nighttime, of it being in the water by using his hands. Um, I agree, Miss Swope. It really does seem tropical because we're noticing this palm tree here, just like you might see where you live. And I'm noticing the man seems to be rowing a boat and he's looking like he's rowing away. If you kind of put your hands like this, he's looking like he's rowing away from, from what looks like an island in the water. And it also looks like an island because we have a palm tree here. And I'm noticing this rope in the middle of the palm tree or in the middle um, of between the boat and the island tied to the palm tree. Hmm. And I'm also noticing these lines. Sorry, it keeps on getting blurry because I'm standing in front of it. I'm also noticing these lines that this artist put underneath this kind of triangle island. So he's trying to tell us a story here. So let's think about this story. We've talked a little bit about what we're seeing, but let's look a little more closely at these people. I'm going to ask some questions again, so feel free to pause this video or write down responses or talk as a group. What do we notice about the people in this work of art? I'm going to zoom in on the people. What do you notice about the people? Think about how the artist arranged these people, how he put them on the work of art. But also not only the people, but also the island, the water. Look how he's creating the story. We notice the rope. We notice the palm tree. What story do you think he's trying to tell? If you had to guess, what story do you think he's trying to tell? Okay. Oh, Miss Quailar said it, it almost seems pressing because of the colors that he's using, right? Colors can um, tell us a lot about the story. Certain colors can make us feel happy. Certain colors can make us feel sad. They can also tell us about the setting of the story, right? It can tell us a little bit about the time of day. So for me, um, the dark colors are making it seem like maybe this is nighttime. But you're right. It doesn't seem like this is a um, maybe a happy story. Great job, Miss Quailar. Thank you. Yeah, the man. Okay, um, Miss Smilka is saying the the man is leaving, and uh, perhaps the mermaid's wanting him to say. Yeah, maybe he's feeling trapped there. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this artist, and it can it can lead to telling you a little bit about this story. This work of art is by a man named Jose Beria. Jose Beria is from Cuba. Remember I told you we were going to travel to Cuba for this first work of art. In 1993, um, gosh, is that over 30 years ago now? <laughs> he had to leave Cuba and leave to Miami where he still lives today. This work is called Si Se Pudiera. Si Se Pudiera. Some of you might have mentioned those three words at the bottom of this work of art. So sometimes artists use, um, sorry if it's backwards here. Sometimes artists use words, not only line shapes and colors, but they also use words to tell us a story. So this says si se pudiera, which is the title of this work of art. And maybe you've already translated this, um, but si se pudiera means if only I could. Si se pudiera from 1993, the year he moved to Miami. You'll notice that we all notice the man rowing the boat. 
And it looks like, as we said before, there's a rope tied to a palm tree. And the artist has used three lines to make it look like the island is moving. And you all are, did a great job of already noticing all these details. There's also lines somewhere else. And I want to show you who can kind of, let's zoom in. If you could, let's see if you can tell me what you see by this man's mouth. What I love about this camera is I can get even closer to the work of art than you could in person. So let's take a look at this man's mouth. <gasps> I see three lines coming out of his mouth. Artists can use lines to show us an action, right? This person seems to be talking and he's not just talking. He's also telling us three words. Me la llevo. I take it with me. So we have, si se pudiera, if only I could. And this man say, saying, I take it with me. And let's look at this mermaid. And I'm already seeing some good comments in the chat. I cannot wait um, to debrief and hear everything that you're saying. Let's look at this mermaid. Let's look what's coming from her mouth. She has three lines coming out of her mouth, too. Many of you might have noticed it looks like a mermaid because it seems like she has a tail coming out of the water. This also could be what's called a siren, a siren, which is kind of like a mermaid, but it's a mythological creature who calls people into the ocean, who's calling them to her. So she's saying something, too. Me la llevo. I take it with me if only I could. So think about what is Jose Bedia trying to tell us by saying these things? What story is he trying to tell? I see Miss Swaip said her second grade class is saying um, they think the man is trying to take a piece of his island. Maybe he's trying to take Cuba with him um, because the stars and the lines. Look, look how the shooting star and the man. Great observation is kind of. Um, shooting towards the island, right? Um, and then uh, the lines are on the mermaid and the mountainers, the same as the man. So maybe the artist is trying to communicate. Jose Betty is telling us something by putting all these symbols into the people, telling us that they're connected. So Jose Bedia is telling us here a story of someone's journey. Um, maybe he's trying to take Cuba with him. How do you think Jose Bedia felt having to leave his home and move to a new country? And this is something, um, educators, if you can't stop and talk about this now, you're always welcome to talk about this work of art and how this artist might have felt having to leave his own home. Own home. Maybe you've had to leave something before and it's made you sad. Many people, when I teach this work of art, have a personal connection to this artwork. Jose Bedia still makes a lot of art about his home in Cuba and where he's from. So I'm, I'm going to challenge you to continue um, after this tour to tell stories through writing, making art, dancing about a place that's special to you. So we've learned about one place um, where somebody's telling us about their home and where they're from and how they had to leave their home. So let's go to the next work of art and let's see another special place. And we're going to go to Europe. Miss Swipe, the mermaid uh, shadow really does look like a, do a dolphin um, right here. I, I kind of noticed that too. They're really making that person look um, like, like an animal. Great observation. I agree with that. Okay, so we're going to head back through our Mr. Chihuly on to our next work of art. We're not only going to travel to Europe. By the way, this is another one of my favorite works of art by a man named Oliver Eliasson. And this work of art is all about the universe and space. So we travel not only around the world at the Norton, but you can travel all the way to space. So this work of art that we're going to see, um, it's not only in Europe rather than Cuba,
but it also is going to travel us back in time. We're going back in time. We're going back in time from the present day. And we're going to go back a hundred years. So let's take a look at this next work of art. As we go into this gallery, you'll notice all different types of artwork on the wall. This is our photography gallery. Great photographs about people and places too. Okay. So here we go to our next work of art. When we get there, I want you again to take some time to just look. Let me see if I can get my camera straight on the work of art. Oh, I, I'm already feeling like this is a very different type of place than where we were before. But I also noticed some things that I saw in the last work of art that I also see in here. So you'll have to look really closely. And I'll tell you what it is after we do some close looking. Okay. I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I can, but still show you the whole work. And then I promise I'll zoom into some of the details too, just like the last one. So take some time again to just look. I'm going to ask you some questions again. So you can think about these questions in your head. You can write them down. You can talk about them as a group. And again, you can pause this video at any time if you need more time to discuss. Let's start with our elements of art, with our lines and our shapes and our colors. What colors do you see? Colors is really important to this artist. So let's time to look, take time to look at the colors. What colors? do you see? I'll zoom in a little bit for you as you look at the colors. Mr. Long, I love the associations you're already making. Awesome. What colors do you see? Okay, what, what about the lines? What do you notice about the lines? Are they small lines, big lines? I'm going to challenge you to think like an artist for a second. If you were this artist and you were painting this work, I want you to look at what we call the brush strokes. Brush strokes are what you make with a paintbrush. So I want you to take your hand and I want you to hold a paintbrush in your hand. Okay, hold the paintbrush and I want you to show me if you were this artist, what would your brush strokes look like? Would they be really small? Would you go really slow? Would you go fast? I'm gonna show you what my brush strokes would look like. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna pretend to paint this one. Ready? My brush strokes would be really fast and they would be big brush strokes and they would go all over the place. This artist was called an impressionist artist. And the reason they got that name is because somebody actually who didn't like this work of art said, oh, this is a mere impression of reality, meaning that they didn't think it looked real. They didn't think they looked realistic, but this artist wasn't trying to make it look realistic. They want us to, wanted us to capture the feeling of this place, what it actually felt like to stand in this place. So the artist uses brush strokes to do that. Look how the artist has invited us to walk into this painting and look all around. I want you to pretend like you're walking into this painting on this path and pretend like you're looking all around. What looks familiar to you in this work of art? What do you recognize? 
Or what are you noticing? I'm noticing Mr. Long says it looks like um, a villa in Italy. Okay, maybe a villa means a big house. So you're noticing these kind of houses up here. We also have this one um, at the top of my camera roll move with what's called a spire, which is a point on top of a building. Okay, so we have a lot of buildings. Um, I will challenge you. I have someone who said, the EdTech team says it looks very upper class. I'm going to challenge you by telling me a little bit more about what that means to you. If you could describe what looking very upper class means to you. And then Mr. Long is noticing a lot of palm, uh, palm fronds, which are like palm trees. Remember how I said this work of art, just like Jose Bedia, has something familiar? Look. This is a palm tree. So we have our palm tree here again, which might mean that it's somewhere um, warm. So our next question, let's think about this story. Where do you think this might be? Mr. Long thinks it's in Italy and he's noticing maybe it's by a villa, big house. Where might this be? Where do you think this could be and why? Are you like the dirt trail going into the dense vegetation? Yeah, it seems like a really, really um, kind of fun garden to explore. Okay, so where might this be? What time of day do you think this is? If you had to guess, is this morning, night, afternoon? And this is important because this artist really cared a lot about um, he painted at all different times of day. Now, I wonder if this is somewhere where you might want to go. Does this look like somewhere you'd want to visit? Why or why not? The Egg Tech team said, it's blue skies. Okay, so there's no stars. It doesn't look as dark as Badia's work, so maybe it's midday. And I'm noticing it looks like the sun must be coming down. It looks kind of hot based on the what we call warm colors, right? We have a lot of pinks and yellows. It's making me feel like I'm in a warm place. And we notice on the path, look how this artist has used lots of light colors next to a lot of dark colors, right? He's put different paints next to each other. Let me go down to the path to show us light, to show us that maybe there's light coming from the sky onto this path. So maybe, maybe it is midday. So I'm getting the feeling that this is a warm place. We seem like we're in the middle of a garden, right? We, we have a lot of vegetation and we're noticing these buildings in the back. The buildings in the back are actually a town, um, an Italian town. And we see all these different buildings. And then this is the local church. But we heard Mr. Uh, we, Mr. Long said it looks like a villa. And the painting, this title is Gardens of Villa Moreno. So this artist, Claude Monet, painted this in the gardens of a villa, a really big house. Claude Monet is from France. And in the 1800s, this is gosh, over a hundred years old now. It's from 1884. He went to Italy for a vacation, much like you all, maybe some of you all are going on vacation this summer. He went to Italy for a vacation. He was very interested in the light in Italy and how warm it was. So he would stand in this one spot and paint in the gardens at all different times of day. Monet said, I don't care about painting the place. I don't care about painting these buildings and these palm trees. What I care about is painting the light. So that's why he was so interested in painting at all different times of day. And he did this by doing light colors and dark colors and big brush strokes. This was the first time that an artist painted outside. Artists used to paint in their studios, much like you paint in your art class. But there was an invention in the 1830s where someone, an American, in the, someone in the United States invented paint tubes, just like the paint tubes that we might see today. And it made it a lot easier for artists to paint. Guess what 
artists used to use to carry around paint before. These are pig intestines. They would use pig intestines and they would put dried pig intestines and put paint inside. And those weren't very good for traveling. So this was the first time ever where artists were able to travel and go paint outside. And this was so important to these artists because they cared about getting the light at the exact moment. So I hope maybe this is somewhere where you'd like to go visit. Um, so we have two places where we visit today. We've, we visited Cuba and we've also visited Italy. Two kind of warm places. And the third place I want to go is we're going to go and travel to China. So let's head to our next spot and take a look. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm blurry. Let me get out of the screen. Our Chinese collection is our oldest collection at the museum. So you can see things from over a thousand years ago to today. And when you see the yellow, I want you to point on the screen to the artwork that's surrounded by yellow. You see it? We're going to head right towards it. I'm going to get really close. Oh, just for just so you can see the scale. The scale means how big the work of art is, okay? So I'm going to show you my body next to this work of art so you can see how big it is. The other ones, the Jose Bedio was pretty big. It was about as big as me. The Monet was smaller. And let's see how big this one is. Okay, it's a pretty big head, um, and it's also shown from above. So you, when you come to the museum, you kind of look up at this work of art. So let's take a closer look. Let's focus on the face because, let's face it, the head is really all you can see with this work of art. So I want you to look at the face. What do you notice about the face? Okay, once you notice the details about the eyes, the eyebrows, the lips, the ears, the hair, that is a very big head Ed tech team wrote in the chat. Think about all you're seeing and noticing about this head and the work of art. Now let's look at the material. I'm going to zoom in really closely. And teachers, don't forget you can um, pause this at any time. Let's look at the material. Miss Burke Pert said it looks very peaceful. And I love that you made that observation. I'm hoping you can tell me in the chat why you think it looks peaceful because we're going to talk about that in just a minute. What material do you think this is made out of? If you had to guess... What do you think this is made out of? I love how close I can get with this camera. Okay. I want to explore the mood or the feeling of this work of art together. Take a look again at the face because we're going to pose like this character. We're going to pose like this person. So take a look at their eyes, their nose, their mouth, kind of their overall expression. As you pose, and I'm going to do this with you, I want you to take three big breaths. Okay, so on three, we're going to pose and then we're going to take three big breaths. You ready? Okay, on three. One, two, three. Pose. 
And as you pose, take your three big breaths. Okay, now we have that peacefulness that Miss Burke Perk um, saw when she was looking at this work of art. So besides peaceful, how else did you feel when you were posing like this character and taking your deep breaths? How did that make you feel? I felt really calm and relaxed. And I actually do this not just in front of this work of art, but when I'm feeling really stressed out or mad, I like to pose, think about this figure, um, this person and pose like them and take deep breaths. And it makes me feel really uh, calm and peaceful and, and quiet, um, just like this person. I'm going to tell you a little, some people have some guesses about what it is, stone, marble. I'm going to tell you about this work of art. I'm going to tell you a little bit um, more about why it seems peaceful. I'm going to tell you what it's made out of. Um, first, about the face. We are noticing that we have, let's see, my finger can make it there. It seems peaceful, right? Because the eyes seem to be closed or kind of halfway closed. The person seems like they're um, closing their eyes, taking some breaths, maybe sleeping. Their mouth seems to be relaxed. Their face isn't really looking angry, um, right? We have a very relaxed and quiet looking face. This work of art is um, about a man in uh, some religions, mainly Buddhism, Buddhism, called Buddha. You have may, maybe you have heard of Buddha before. Buddha was a when he was living, he was a prince. We know that this is Buddha because he has this hair kind of in a big bun at the top. And uh, very similar to way princes would have worn their hair when he was living. And he also has these ears. Look at these long ears. Let me see if I can. You want me to get to the side? Let's see. Look at these long ears that he has on the side of his face. His earlobes are drooping, which means that this person was rich. This person was so rich that they were able to wear lots of really heavy jewelry. So Buddha was a prince. We know he was rich. He wore um, lots of heavy jewelry. He had his hair in a very fancy hairstyle. And one day he was contemplating and thinking about all that he owned, all the material possessions, toys, jewelry, clothing. And he sat under a tree for a hundred days and he thought about the things about life and the things that he owned. And he meditated, which means he closed his eyes and he thought, just like we did with our deep breaths, for a hundred days under that tree. So Buddha realized after that time that, you know what? The world isn't about what we own. It's not about how much money we have. It's about love. It's about our friends and family. So many people respected Buddha and followed Buddha um, because he taught about, about love and uh, not having material possessions. So this work of art, someone said it's made out of stone, and you're right. This work of art is made out of a certain stone called limestone, which is really easy to carve. The artist would have carved all of these details if you can see. Um, his eyebrows. He carved all the details. And this is over a thousand years old. This is one of the oldest works of art that we have in this museum. And it would have been painted. Imagine a thousand years ago, walking up to this sculpture, maybe the hair would have been brown. Maybe he would have had red lips. Imagine this whole thing would have been painted. This work of art is from somewhere where you can still visit today. It's from what's called the Long Men Caves in China. So in this cave, you see how big they are? So this one, the Buddha that we have is kind of small. In these caves, you can walk up from the water and you can see all these different Buddhas. And you can think about 
your life and what matters most to you. So pretty cool that you can visit this place. They have over a thousand Buddhas in China that you can go visit. And this is one of them. We have the head, by the way. It would have been attached to a body originally, but it's so old. Now we just have the head. So there's so many cool places that we traveled today that you can travel to as well. And I'm going to leave you with something. Um, You can discuss this as a class, or maybe you can even make it an activity. If you could travel anywhere in the world, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? You, again, can discuss this question as a group, or you can even make this an art activity. Um, You can make your own work of art about where you would like to go on a trip. You could even go online with an adult and research about where you want to go before creating your work of art. Or maybe you want to write or dance or just tell oral stories about your favorite trip or somewhere you'd, you'd like to go and journey to. I cannot wait to see you at the museum this summer for free Saturday. So tell your family that you want to go to the Norton Museum of Art. We'll have a Juneteenth celebration on June 18th. That's a fun family day for the entire family. And on July 17th, we'll have something called Games Around the World, where you can play all different games from all over the world. Because again, we have artworks from all over the world. Thank you for traveling around the world with me today. Congratulations on having a great school year. Happy summer. And we'll see you in the new year. See you soon at the Norton. Thank you. Thanks so much, Meredith. Uh, We greatly appreciate that trip around the world and just seeing so many awesome details. That camera really is amazing. You you don't really get to see it until you get right up close into it. And uh, I'm just thinking about the words in the first one that just magically it looked like they appeared as you got closer. So, yeah, so we do appreciate that. Great. And we still, you can, we hope uh, if you're a teacher and you want to book a tour, you can book a tour starting in August during preschool. Um, You can come see these works of art in person, but we'll still also be offering virtual tours such as this, where we really engage one-on-one with your students virtually. And it's a great way to just do something during your class if you can't um, get off site. So we look forward to seeing you either with your families or with your class next year. That's awesome. And I love the the games thing too. That sounds like it's going to be such an exciting event. Yeah, so, please wow. come. Very cool. You can play, well, you can play uh, in a chess tournament and you oh. can also play games like Mancala and, and all different sorts of games from, from every different parts of the globe. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Meredith. Uh, we're, we're so glad to have you today. So we're just going to finish up with a few things and then we will end this live stream. Um, so again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we we went to four great places and talked to great people this week. Um, the website is on there. I also put the website in the chat. It is bit.ly slash 2022VLE, all capital letters there at the end. And at the bottom of that webpage as well, it will give you all of our learning experiences that we've done for the past three years. So you can take a look at that playlist as well and uh, show some of those to your students uh, throughout the year, if you have some time tomorrow, whenever. uh, They are there for you to use as uh, instructional tools whenever you need. And again, don't forget to find the website. If you didn't save that bit.ly link, you just go to our website, which is edtechtraining.palmbeachschools.org. And for now, it will be in that top left corner where you see the 2022 Spring Virtual Learning Experiences. And then that will soon move under online events, uh, you know, in a month or two, whenever this uh, this has passed. So don't forget to check out our website. It's always being updated. We try to give you the latest updates from our team right here in the middle um, as new things come around. We have lots of amazing things planned for you as we are getting to the uh, beginning of next year already and thinking about what we're going to be doing in the fall. So please don't hesitate to check our website often and, uh, and find something that you're interested in joining us with. And so with that, on behalf of the training team and the entire EdTech team as a whole, I want to thank you so much for joining us and also thank you for having another great school year. And please stay safe this summer. Teachers, enjoy your rest. Get some rest this summer. 
And uh, most importantly, uh, spend time with uh, people that you love. So have a great uh, vacation this summer. Talk to you soon, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.